Fun new adventure we're going on today. Normal, the same, but uh, we're beginning with some hymns, and there's lots of hymns today. And I need your help today, because some of these hymns aren't immediately coming to mind, but we're going to do just fine. The first is hymn number 507, Make Me a Blessing. I know a different version, so this is going to be sight reading 101, so I need your help. It's going to be up there, so the words are there. And so if you'll just please join me, and we'll stand, and we'll sing hymn number 507, Make Me a Blessing. Please stand up. All right, good morning, everyone. Good to have you with us. Uh, so, uh, the live stream is not running today, unfortunately, for some reason. So, we are recording still, I believe, so you still need to behave yourselves um, because it, it will still go on the internet later on. So, uh, so we need to behave ourselves. But, uh, Today, uh, well, it would fit that today something would not work with technology stuff because today is different, uh, a different Sunday. So I'm not exactly sure what all, uh, all of the reasons were, but some of our worship band folks cannot be here today uh, because I think mostly scheduling conflicts and so forth. So we're going to have a little bit of a different service today and... Um, and uh, it's uh, next week, hopefully, uh, you know, trying to schedule things in this, <laughs> this day and age is, is quite complicated. So we just, I've been trying to say this and we got to, we really got to get it of, uh, we have to just be used, get used to the idea of at the last minute, something being different and changing and all kinds of stuff. So 
Um, anyway, uh, so today a little bit different, but not not all that different. So uh, it'll be it'll be good for us. Uh, so just a, mostly a different different order of the music's a little bit different. Um, all right, a couple of a uh, couple of things for uh, Operation Christmas Child. We have been mentioning that. And this month we've been collecting washcloths, toothbrushes, individually wrapped toothbrushes, combs, and soap. Uh, we are a little bit below where we need to be for those items for this month. So if, uh, if you would like to get some of those, that would be very helpful. If you haven't yet and you would like to, uh, this would be a great, a great time to do that. Um, but uh, we're, we're doing okay, but we're just a little bit below where, uh, where we need to be. So washcloths, toothbrushes, combs, and soap. Um, those are the items that we are, uh, that we are looking for. Uh, two other things real quick. Um, you know, at, at the beginning of uh, this, this crazy COVID time that, uh, that we were in, there were announcements that I had made that I never imagined that I would have to, to have to make. One is that, you know, like if you remember early on and the shortage of toilet paper and just say, you know, like, Oh, if you, if you have extra toilet paper, keep it in mind in case anybody, you know, if you need toilet paper, you know, <laughs> reach out and we'll try to get some to you. And so I never would have imagined that I would have to make any type of announcements about that or anything. Right. Well, I have a new one. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it, uh, just just because um, of the the day and age that we live in, uh, because actually our family um, uh, had to had to reach out for for help this week, and uh, thankfully uh, everything was fine, but we did have to reach out for help. So uh, this is I'm thinking mostly for like the families with school age children, but it does apply to everybody. Uh, the in-home COVID tests. Uh, if you uh, if you find yourself needing one of those, reach out and um, we're uh, the Simmons family is going to try to have a, a stockpile of them and so forth. But uh, uh, it you know you just never know when you may end up needing one of those. So if uh, so we never would have imagined you know. Uh, the toilet paper thing, never would have imagined in-home COVID tests. Uh, you know, if you need one of those, reach out. But, uh, but it's, it's the reality that, uh, that we're living in now. So, um, and if, if you find them and you want to get some as well, and so forth, I'm, I'm sure at some point you'll use it. <laughs> uh, that, would, that would be great just to keep in mind for, for folks um, for, the coming, for the coming months for sure that are ahead of us. Uh, okay, one last thing, and I have to kind of... I kind of speak in code because I'm not totally sure uh, of how much that I can say, but it revolves around some like of the international missions uh, mission stuff. And uh, because before we were live streaming and doing everything on the internet and so forth, we had decided to really like partner with more creative access stuff where you can't just freely uh, say things on the internet and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so here's here's the kind of code. Some of you will have no idea who this person is, and I apologize for that. But some of you will be able to be able to guess pretty easily, I think. Uh, but her initials are M and Q, uh, and some of you know her very well. She is going to be able to be with us on October third, which is uh, a couple Sundays from now. However, she cannot speak with the live stream. We cannot put anything on the internet of what she is saying and with her likeness and all that kind of stuff. So what we are going to do on that Sunday uh, is have, after the service, she is going to stay with us and, um, and present after the service and when we shut down all cameras and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so here's the invitation. If you would like to stay and, and be part of that, uh, hang out. It's going to be real low key and, and so forth. But if you want to bring your lunch and just hang out, eat lunch uh, in the room here with her and just spend some time with her and with one another in that capacity, that will be fantastic. If you want to stay and, and not, have, not have food and so forth, that's completely fine as well. Uh, we're not going to bring out the tables like we have before. We're, we're just going to keep it real, real as stress-free as possible, but be able to give her um, space to kind of update what's going on 
uh, but in a safer environment of not doing it during the service, shutting down, live stream, all, all these kind of complicated things. So October 3rd, after the service, hang out uh, and listen to MQ uh, if, if you would like. Uh, any questions, talk to me afterwards, and uh, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Uh, all right, well, uh, let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll have our uh, next song. So uh, join me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for today and just this beautiful day. Um, Lord, as we uh, just continue to live in these um, trying and interesting times, uh, fill us with faith and, and love and, and help us and um, go before us, Father, as we just uh, continue to try to, to live how, how you want us to and uh, to be the church here, uh, here in Plymouth and the, and the surrounding area. Um, there's so much going on, Father. Uh, focus our attention on you this morning and help us to, to glorify you and to honor you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And our next hymn is uh, More Love to Thee, which is right there. It's hymn number 466 if you have a hymnal, but otherwise, let's all stand if you're willing and let us sing. talking a lot about salt and light, and um, over, um, my hope is that over the coming uh, weeks and months and years that we will begin to hear more and more stories uh, about how we are being salt and light in our community and with everything that is, that is going on. Uh, and at times, my hope is that uh, if you will so agree that you will come and sit here with me and have a chat. And so this morning, we are going to hear from uh, my wife, Chrissy, and Tutu. Uh, so uh, now, before we, before we start this, I do want to say, there is there's a history, there's a 
pattern in the American church. Let me, there's a false belief at times that pastors have it all together and that uh, pastors' families are uh, the, uh, the go-to knowledge uh, givers and so forth and so on. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're better for it. Um, <laughs> But there, there's a history of situations like this coming up where a, a pastor and his wife will come up and say, well, let us tell you how to have a great marriage and so forth and so um, That's not what this is. Um, it, it, it's in part, um, there, there's a couple reasons. One is so that you can kind of get an example of it before being the first one, uh, so unfortunately for Chrissy. Um, the second, though, is that uh, I think Chrissy does a fantastic job with being salt and light, and uh, I think you will be blessed by hearing from her directly. Uh, now, we have not practiced this, <laughs> and I don't know what she's about to say. I don't know what she's uh, talking about. <laughs> so we are going to have... Um, just, just a few questions, and let let Chrissy share um, share what uh, what's on her mind with it, and uh, and in part uh, again, this is um, in the hopes that if we can be hearing from each other on the on these things, then we will grow in our knowledge and understanding and so forth of what this of what this can look like. Uh, if, if it's always only coming from my perspective, uh, I, don't, I don't work in the places where you work, right? So I don't know what some of those greater details and so forth can look like. Uh, so I want us to be hearing from, from one another. Uh, and if, you, if we get really nervous, what we're going to do is spin around um, <laughs> and just do, do a full circle. So if you see that, it's fine. We just got really nervous. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, thanks, for, thanks for being here, Chris. Um, when, you, when you think about being salt and light, uh, what, what comes to mind for you? Uh, well, I guess it's been something that um, I've been blessed to have as like part of what being a Christian has always meant to me. Um, my parents were very intentional about reminding us, um, especially as we went off to school, that um, we were salt and light. Um, I remember specifically my mom saying, it would be a lot easier to homeschool you, but <laughs> and um, <laughs> you were there for a purpose, you were there for a reason. And uh, so that has always stuck with me that um, when people see us out in the community that we should be uh, a good reflection for the name of Christ. Uh, and so in your everyday life now, uh, where, where are some places that you're, that you're living this out, that you're finding that how you manifest that now? Um, so simple places like the grocery store, um, when I go to the playground with my girls or wherever we go out and about throughout the summer um, or, you know, during the school year at the playground at the school, um, at school, um, in the PTA, um, I don't know, my, is there something else <laughs> we're getting? Uh, well, you, you find yourself in a lot of situations where you're with a lot of other people. I mean, we, like, uh, our other daughters will say something like, you know everyone. Um, <laughs> they, so, but there's, there's an intentionality that, that you're going into these places with, right? Um, right. It's not just by accident that this is, that this is happening. Right. Um, I'm, I'm not necessarily like a by nature super outgoing person, um, but I try to, you know, look around where I go and, and see the people that I'm with and pay attention to people who might need someone to talk to or, um, you know, 
just try to start building relationships with people wherever I, wherever I go. And from that then comes connections that if you hear of somebody who else, if somebody's in need with something, then you can connect them with other people right. as well because you're just always collecting all this information. And it really helps too living in a small town. Like that's a big blessing for us. I think as um, Jesus followers living in a small town because you do see the same people over and over at different places and in different contexts and you have a chance to follow up with them. If, if you talk to them one day and you find out about a problem or a difficulty they're having, um, that's not the last time you're going to see them. And when you talk to them the next time and you ask them about that, it really makes an impact, I think, that you cared and you, you know, you followed up and you know me more than just as the cashier or whatever. There was also an important thing that you were listening to something the other day that, and the lady was saying that, like, if you're a jerk in a small town, <laughs> right? You'll, there's a good chance you'll see right. that person again. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, self-preservation, but then also, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, there's another aspect. This is. Um, you have to take these kind of things as, okay, how does this fit with my specific situation and, and so forth? For us, right now, we have young children. Uh, and, and this one, Tutu, uh, it creates a lot of uh, conversation for us. Uh, and, and, I mean, so many people at the grocery store, like when she started kindergarten a couple of weeks ago, you went to the grocery store by yourself. What was the interaction when you were there alone? Everyone was asking, oh, where's Tutu? Oh, that's right, she started school. How are you doing? <laughs> okay, please stop talking to me. <laughs> Can't put my sunglasses on in the store, okay? <laughs> um, no, it, yeah, um, they, they, they were disappointed not to see you, Tutu. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, what are what are some barriers or difficulties that have come up with with some of these things of being salt and light in in these places? Um, well, I think for for all of us, I think our our I don't know. I should say for myself, I think the number one barrier sometimes to being salt and light is just our own selfishness. Sometimes we don't feel like it. Um, Either we're in a hurry, um, which I guess is another big barrier, but it really actually comes down to selfishness, I think, too, for me at least. Um, I don't have time to pay attention. I don't have the capacity to pay attention. And um, I guess when that happens, I just have to, to stop and, and pray and just remind myself that um, it's not about what I feel like or don't feel like. Um, and, and God's faithful in that too, to, to help through that. Yeah, and I mean, as everybody's seeing right now, you're a full-time wrestler as well. With, uh, <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> so there's, there's some challenges uh, there too. I can't remember. Um, so we're all gonna have barriers, we're all gonna have difficulties that come up and so forth. So th those are things for us to be looking for, but what are some other things that you've learned uh, as well from from this? Um, I guess one thing that um, I've learned is just to um, kind of look out for um, for an opportunity for someone who maybe looks like they um, need that extra encouragement or that extra help or just that um, acknowledgement. Um, one, one example of this that a lot of you actually helped with um, this past year, it was a rough year at the school. Um, teachers, and some of you here are teachers, it, it, is, it has not been easy for the teachers to go through what this last year and a half has been. And I just felt like there was a real opportunity for us as Christ followers. One thing that like knowing Jesus gives us is gratitude. And um, yes, our first gratitude is to him, but then that also pours out in our lives in other ways. And so um, I saw the opportunity during Teacher Appreciation Week to do something for the teachers. And um, a lot of the kids and the people from Bible study got involved and we made them um, these little flower pots that just had a little message saying thank you for all they've done for the kids in the community. 
And, um, and that, it turned out that that really meant a lot to the principal, the teachers, um, and the people at the school, just to know that in a time when everyone's kind of criticizing them <laughs> and finding all the things that are wrong and when they're putting so much extra effort in that someone is actually noticing and grateful. Yeah, and you had a, a number of people come up and just thank you. And right, just, yes. And it was, yeah. there was like emotional response right. To, right. to that as well. Definitely. Um, um, shall I give another real quick little yeah. example? Um, another real quick example, um, and the great thing about living in a small town, like I said, this can happen over time, but recently when we were at the store, it happened all in one visit. Um, we, we saw an elderly lady trying to get her car, and she was kind of having a difficult time. But knowing that we're in New England, I didn't just rush in to help. <laughs> but we stood there patiently and just said, oh, man, these, this real wrestling match to get these carts out, you know, and just kind of spoke to her for a moment. And then we ended up seeing her, I think, twice more while we were in the store. And then we got to the checkout, and the lines, as they can be at Walmart sometimes, were absolutely insane. And um, they opened a new checkout, and the lady was, like, asking me, oh, you can come. Well, we had a ton of stuff. And I saw that in the line right ahead of me were these two elderly ladies, her and another lady, and um, they both had just a few items. So I told them, you guys go ahead. Go ahead of us. And um, so they did. And then as we're unloading carts and this and that, she started ask, talking to me the lady that we had originally seen. And um, through the course of the conversation, she asked about, I think we had some of the boxes for Christmas Child or something. So we got to talk about that a little bit. And um, she said, oh, where do you guys live? And we told her. And of course, living here in the corner, about 95% of Plymouth knows where we live. <laughs> and therefore knows what we do. <laughs> and so it was just a real reminder for me of like, all those positive interactions, I don't know what God's doing with them, but I know that they were connected to him um, and that for her, it was a positive thing that, um, you know, it, we weren't seen in a negative light and therefore Jesus wasn't seen in a negative light. And I don't know, you know, if that will go anywhere else, but I think that's kind of the beauty of it. We don't know what God's using, and we don't know who else he's putting in these people's lives at the same time. And so we just have to be faithful with our part and let him do the rest. Yeah, because some of it could be like, well, that's just being a generally nice person and good person and, and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, somebody somebody could challenge that or somebody could say, well, what are the results? Give us the results. You know, did, did every teacher show up to the church after you did the thing? And I want to to kind of just be challenged towards not not thinking along those lines of um, of those results, but and and just in what could be looked at as just niceness is that we're also ready for that next step if it would happen. If God would call us to be the ones to enter into that next step with them, then we'll do that. Or maybe we just create a clearer pathway for that next person that God is going to bring into their life. And so, uh, and, and I think that's where, like, once you have had multiple interactions with folks, um, be it like for me, like another parent at the playground or something, then when we're having a conversation, um, one thing that I'm trying to challenge myself with and, um, do like a better, do, do better of noticing is when something comes up, that's an opportunity, then I take it. And a lot of times this might come up in something that's a cultural, um, something that we say culturally that is not actually true um, for us as Christ followers. And so instead of just agreeing with that cultural euphemism or whatever you want to call it, um, actually saying what I really believe and what I really live out. Yeah, great. Uh, so last thing is just uh, you work with the children. Um, here and so, what what encouragement do you have for our children who are here of of uh, for all ages? Because uh, of, of all ages, they can be salt and light. Uh, so, what some things um, for the children? Well, don't ever think that you're not making an impact, and that 
you're not able to be salt and light just because you're not a grown up. Um, because you guys see people every day at school or at college or wherever you're going that um, they need love and they need um, the hope that you have. And so I would just encourage you to really be aware. And instead of just going to school and thinking of it as, oh, I, it's fun, I can learn, I can hang out with my friends, also be looking for what would Jesus need you to do there today? Is there someone who needs a friend? Is there a teacher who maybe the class is giving her a rough time and you can be the one that's not giving her a rough time? Um, because that can, that can make a big impact. Jesus gives you gratitude, hope, confidence, and you can, and grace, and you can give those things to the people around you. And when you do, you're different, and, and that can make an uh, impact. I, I have, see me later if you want a story about kids I went to elementary school with <laughs> who I had no idea. Um, and I got a Facebook message from them years later as an adult. Um, so don't underestimate what God can do with you. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's give her a hand. All right, and that was for Tutu as well, of course. Uh, all right, thank you. I hope that was helpful. Um, and I know there's been some chatter uh, over the coming months about that you don't want to tell me stories because then you may end up up here. Uh, please do. Uh, and if you really don't want to end up up here, I'll, I'll figure out a way. Uh, but, uh, but we need to share stories. Uh, we need to share stories and, and we need to share the things that we're learning, that we're seeing, and uh, the, the places that you're at. What are you learning? What are you seeing going on? What is God doing? We, you never know how sharing that can encourage someone else or, or help someone else. And so, uh, so uh, you know, Chrissy really didn't want to do that, but she, she graciously did. Uh, so I'm, I'm thankful for her and all that she does with, with the children uh, in, in the church and for everybody else who works with the children as well. Uh, we're going to continue salt and light. That's not going anywhere if you haven't, uh, haven't picked up on that. Uh, all right, we have a special now. So uh, would uh, Dean and Faye and Gail please come? Well 
That was great. I really appreciate it. Uh, all right, you're all probably sick and tired of hearing from me already this morning, but you got a, you got a little bit longer to go. Uh, all right, so First Peter it will be our text again for this morning, so if you want to start finding that, that would be great. I saw an exchange of words this week on a social media platform that brought laughter and sadness and dread all at once. The exchange, I think, exposes perfectly where we are as a country and the great challenges that we have ahead of us. Now, the context of the exchange is about college football, but it's so much more than that. It fits in with our discussion about salt and light, and it speaks to how we treat one another, and it really overwhelms the mind. When we start thinking about truth and submission, accountability and togetherness, and all of these things fit in with, with First Peter and being in Christ and just our, our lengthy discussion we've been having over the last uh, several weeks. You ready for the exchange? An exchange between two people as part of a discussion about college football. The first person said, he's not wrong. That's his opinion. And the second person responded, I'm not wrong either. It's my opinion. <laughs> Have you seen this play out in your life? He's not wrong. It's his opinion. I'm not wrong either. It's my opinion. The further we move into 1 Peter, this exchange is going to ravage our brains. Someone has said that 1 Peter is the most dense book of social ethics in the Bible. But as far as I can tell, nowhere does Peter say, this is my opinion. He takes a firm stand. And even if we present it perfectly, which is unlikely, there are going to be times when we want to say, nope, wrong, doesn't feel right. Well, that's his opinion. I listened to a sermon by a pastor this week, and it was just incredibly challenging. And he said this to his congregation, and I think we, including me, need to hear it also. He said this, we only want the truth we want, the truth that keeps us comfortable. We're so driven by our comfort that we probably don't even realize it. And that's going to be a challenge for us as we continue to move forward. Part of this discussion eventually is going to take us to choice. Imagine how different life would be if there were no parking lots. <laughs> Everything was drive through you pull up to the grocery store, grocery store and receive groceries, but not of your choice. You just get what you get. You pull up to the clothing store and receive new clothes, but not of your style choice. You pull up to the restaurant and receive a bag of food, but again, not of your choice. How you doing? Do you want to live in that world? <laughs> There's a device that's probably becoming obsolete at this point. Partly maybe because it caused so much division and fighting. The car radio. I hate this station! I don't like that style of music. Turn it down. Turn it up. 
how can you like this song? You chose last time. My turn. Music just isn't what it used to be. I say obsolete because we have now began to move into individual personal devices. Everyone can listen to their own thing or entertain themselves. Some of the fighting may have stopped, but is everything well? The individualism in our society enshrines, I'm not wrong either, it's my opinion. But what we will find more and more is that in life, we actually need one another. We are pulling into our own selves more and more and more. But what we need is one another, as challenging as that is. And that's true inside of Christianity. We need one another. We need the church. We aren't robots without any choice. But, as someone else has said, there is no method but the method of Jesus. To live the life of Jesus is your only light. If we're going to be a Christ follower, if we're going to be in Christ, then we are to live in Christ. We have some choices. We have a will and, and so forth. We're not robots, but it's important to know Jesus sets the way. It's the narrow path that God sets for us. First Peter chapter 1, and we're going to move into chapter 2 this week. And so you look at the very end, verse 22 of chapter 1. I want to start there and read into the first three chapters of chapter 2, because if you'll remember, and always keep this in mind, uh, the chapters and verses are a later addition to Scripture. And sometimes that gets complicated because the, they interrupt the thought of of the author, and so forth. So, chapter 1, verse 22, Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up to salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. We're going to stop there. And Peter doesn't say it like this, but I think he would agree with me. Christianity is not like a game of solitaire. Christianity is community. Right? Solitaire is you can do that all by yourself. Right? And if somebody comes along and says, well, why'd you make that move? You should do this. You say, get out of here. <laughs> this, is, this is called solitaire for a reason. I need solitude. Right? That's not Christianity. Christianity is about community. Peter gives us a one another statement here. Right? Uh, and I, I came across something this week. It was actually a list that someone else has compiled. But it, it's, it's called 59 one another statements in the New Testament. 59 one another statements in the New Testament. Seven of the 59 are found in 1 Peter. Right? Uh, you'll, you'll thank me for this later. I'm not going to read the whole list to you. Uh, but let me just give you a few. And these are not all from First Peter, but, um, but from a couple other places in the New Testament as well. But just, just hear these things. This is from the Word of God. Number one is, you know, I'm pretty sure it's a translation error, but it's be at peace with one another. <laughs> Honor one another above yourselves. Instruct one another. 
if you keep on biting and devouring one another, you will be destroyed. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Forgive one another. Encourage one another. Love one another. You're doing okay. <laughs> that's, only, that's only a few. And I'm already thinking, like, how? <laughs> I mean, I know we need it, but how? That's overwhelming. I'm guessing we would all say that, yes, that's a good and necessary list. But I think you would probably echo as well the question, how? How can we do it? When we traveled uh, this summer, Chrissy got to go and spend a few, a uh, little bit of time one of the days with some of our college friends. And uh, they, so they were hanging out together, they went to a thrift store or, or something. But she, she sent me a photo, she texted me a photo. Uh, well, they were in the thrift store and it was of this t-shirt that she had found. And she said she was gonna buy it for me. She, she didn't buy it for me, but I wish she would have. There was a saying on the, on the front of the shirt, and this, this is the saying, and it's, it's kind of become a joke mantra for us, uh, for Christian. You know, we'll just look at each other and we'll, we'll mutter this to each other sometimes. Here's what the shirt said. I used to be a people person, but people ruined it. <laughs> now, I don't know where it came from, right? I don't know, I don't know the context of, of, or who created that saying. But when I hear it, I'm like, amen. <laughs> I used to be a people person, but people have ruined it, right? How, how, do we, how do we be at peace with one another, right? Because people are difficult, yes? Right? Uh, there's a business down the road a little ways here on Fairgrounds Road. There's a gentleman that works at said business, and... Uh, requires him to drive early in the morning to the business and then go home in the evening. I'm, I'm not quite sure if it's uh, purposeful or not, but the longer that this goes on, the more purposeful it actually seems. His car that he has has a problem. And it's a serious problem. And I don't know if it's his own making or if it's just that he can't get it fixed or what, but the car has a problem. The gentleman will pull up to the stop sign. We live right beside the stop sign. Have you heard a car backfire before? <laughs> you're, you're certain that you've been shot, right? Now, one backfire is bad enough. And I'm saying, it seems purposeful that this is happening. We're talking five or six backfire. <laughs> We're running for cover, <laughs> right? I mean, like, it's like, oh, you know, I guess my heart is doing okay because, uh, like, we, we are jumping. Now, I've, I know the basic timeline of when he's driving around. So I'm listening for the engine so I can prepare us. Get ready! <laughs> it's about to happen! <laughs> right? Uh, our neighbor over here, like we, we text one another. You know, he still hasn't fixed it. Yeah. I told them, I'm going to get the shirt. I used to be a people person, but people ruined it. I'm going to stand at the stop sign for when he comes by. And just, do you see this? You have done this. Right? Be at peace with one another. <sighs> I have an opinion about his vehicle. He has an opinion about his vehicle. How do we live in community? Well, we can't do it ourselves. We need the Holy Spirit. I heard a pastor say this this week, and I loved it. He said, God is the life maker. He said, you want to live? Go to the life maker. I love that. 
Peter continues in chapter 2 with what is necessary. How do we live in community? So put away. Don't keep any just in case. <laughs> well, I might need a little bit of malice from time to time. Nope. So put away all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, all envy, all slander. Put away the things that are not of God. That creates a void. We, okay, we put these things away. Well, what, what does that mean? The Apostle Paul steps in and helps us real quick here. Romans 6, we are dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Romans 15, may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another. Ephesians 4 and 5, don't walk like those who don't follow God. Be imitators of God. Galatians 5, live by the Holy Spirit. Walk by the Holy Spirit. Colossians 3, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is. Set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things of the earth. Your life is hidden in God. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That's what fills the void. Now, those were all summaries, and you can go and, and read those passages in full, and that would be a good thing to do. What we see from these texts, and, and with Peter here, is a push to maturity. Growth and development. Clarity and depth begins to occur. Okay, these things, they're not of God. They can seem good, they can seem helpful, but they really aren't. Immaturity or carnality is persistently pursuing yourself. Trying to please yourself. That's immaturity. That's carnality. Always trying to just pursue myself. Only engaging in, well, what, what is my opinion? And my opinion will reign supreme no matter what. Those temptations, those temptations can seem insurmountable. And without God, they are. Again, another pastor said this, you can't tell temptation no without the presence of God. It's fantastic. You can't tell temptation no without the presence of God. Another pastor. The proof of maturity is our ability to discern. The proof of maturity is our ability to discern. Another quick story um, that it, it, it's just, well, you'll see. I had to go to uh, North Conway earlier this week. I had to spend an extended period of time there. I took some snacks with me and so forth, but at, later on into the evening, I wanted a little bit more substance of food to get me through the rest of my time that, while I was there. And so I went to Hannaford, and I went to the deli section. You know, some of these grocery stores, that they have this ready-made food, and it's ready to go, and, and so forth. And so I went, and um, I was looking around in the deli section, and I, f I found where they had some of that food and so forth, but they didn't have as many choices as I was hoping for, right? And, and so I'm looking, and they had this little container of uh, General Tso's chicken, right? I was like, well, it's that, or it's sushi. I'm far from home. This seems safer, right? So I get the General Tso's chicken. But I'm looking at it. I've been here before. Right? What if this isn't good? What if it bothers me? I better get something else just in case. So I found this other like broccoli type, type salad and, and so forth. And, so I go and I, I purchase them, get back to the car, I drive to this other, um, this other parking lot. I'm sitting there in my car, 
I'm going to eat before I have my next engagement that I have to go to. And, and so I open the chicken and I'm looking at it. And it looks, it looks OK. But there's still this nagging voice, right? The, the same voice that was in the grocery store. This might not be OK. I don't think it was the Holy Spirit, right? I mean, this is where it's like. <laughs> but, but I'm looking at it as this is a risk. So I get the fork, and I get the first piece, and I put it in my mouth. The sauce was fantastic. The chicken was not. <laughs> now, it needed to be warmed up, so I'm eating it cold. So that might have been part of it. But that voice was like, <laughs> you've been here before. You've eaten things you ought not have eaten. Do you want to continue to consume General So's chicken? And I'm making a decision. I'm sitting there saying, I don't, I don't think I should do this. Uh, well, maybe it was just that one piece. Maybe the second piece will be better. So I get the second piece, and I put it in my mouth. Oh, no, it is just the whole thing, <laughs> right? So that was it. Put the lid back on and said, look, I'm not going to be home for many, many hours. I'm not eating this. And I put it away. I got the broccoli salad. Uh, that was delicious. That was fantastic, right? No problems. Now, see, I'm taking a, just like a real life kind of thing to point to like maturity, discernment, mistakes have been made so you learn, right? This is, this is what we need in our spiritual life, to, to listen to that voice, the Holy Spirit. Put that down. That malice, that envy, that hatred, that whatever it is, put it away because it will harm you. You will not come out of this okay. Put it away and get something else. Maturity and faith brings us to verse 3 in 1 Peter chapter 2. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Right. And notice what Peter is saying. Peter is saying the Lord himself. He doesn't say what the Lord provides for you. Not what you can get from this, but the Lord himself. Taste the Lord himself. Take the Lord himself. In. He is good. Take that into your life. Get that into you. That's nourishment that we need. Big question. Why are we Christians? <laughs> By the Lord, for the Lord. Because he is good. For sake of time, I'm not going to read through it. But I find Daniel chapter 2 very interesting in connection with what we've worked through today. I told you for the coming weeks, we're going to be going back into Daniel. Uh, so if you can read through that second chapter and see how different Daniel is compared to others around him. It's fascinating. I, I found it fascinating doing that this week. And I think Daniel gives a wonderful example of mature faith in action during dangerous times. Mature faith in action during dangerous times. Uh, I'll close with this. Just a little teaser to hopefully get you to want to go and read this, uh, this story. And so uh, some, somebody, um, somebody says, there is not a man on earth who can meet the king's demand. There is not a man on earth who can meet the king's demand. And then just a little bit later it says, but there is a God. <laughs> but there is a God. There is no man on earth who can meet the king's demand, but there is a God. There is a God indeed. Let's pray. Father, help us. <laughs> um, you know, as much as I 
complain about other people, I guess I have to be honest and know that others can complain just as much about me. We are, <laughs> we are, we are something else. The fact that you love us, that you, that you stay with us, <laughs> the, the, uh, you indeed are good. Father, rationally, intellectually, uh, I, I can look at that list of things, malice, envy, slander, all those things, and I say uh, hypocrisy, yeah, those, those things are not good. They need to go. And yet, in the heat of a moment, it's, it seems as though I can say, no, these things are good, and I need them right now. <laughs> Bring us into deeper maturity, Father to help us see how empty those things and so many other things that are not of you, how, how empty they are. They have no nourishment. They have no health benefits for us. They don't even taste good. Help us to see that you, you, you alone are good. And that our lives, especially if we say we are in Christ, we're a Christ follower, we want to follow after Jesus, that your ways need to be part of our life. That love and that peace and that mercy and that grace. Uh, but Father, we cannot derive that from ourselves. And so help us to, to have discernment, help us to be listening for the Holy Spirit and, and to not only believe in you, but to believe you. Uh, Lord, we are, we are yours. Continue your work in us. And we praise you that you even will take on that project. <laughs> it, it, again, it's just, it shows that we are to worship you and to magnify you. Um, so Father, help us, bless us, and go before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for being here. We're going to close with a final song, so let's stand and sing. Our final hymn is